It's 4.30 Monday morning. What's up, guys? It's uh, 25 degrees out here. Um, I had a few things I was going to talk about this morning. Uh, these things usually come to me right when I get out of bed. A lot of times I wake up in the morning and they're in my head like they were placed there while I was asleep. Um, and then I get up sometimes and I'm like, I've got nothing. And I just go do what I'm doing in the morning, work out to start with. Um, and I had a few. One of them was... Um, Daddy, when are you going to become a 1,000 there? And the other one uh, was be the results guy. So I don't really have anything on the 1,000 there. A lot of times when I get up to talk or I turn a video on or if I'm speaking in front of people, I'm not good at building a speech, right? If you give me a thing to talk about, a topic, I can build off of there. But I'm a lot better just turn it on and, oh, my God, here we go, let's go. And then depending on how the audience reacts, that can become something different or with audience interaction, it can become something different. Building a video all by myself without topic, um, it's difficult. Like, And I, I do it. You guys see it most mornings. I say most mornings because I don't do it every morning. Um, but so the daddy, when are you going to become a 1,000 era? Like kids, right? Kids innocent. They don't know things, right? Most people would rather have people look at them as being successful if they were a 1,000 air. When I was a kid, it was one millionaire. When are you going to become a millionaire? And it was seemed like something that was so far away and unobtainable as a child learning about money and numbers, right? One mil, 1,000 air. Now it's one millionaire, and one millionaire is so obtainable. When you start doing business and you're looking at your records and you realize you have made $1 million, you don't have it, but you have done $1 million in sales. How long did it take to get there? And what were you chasing, right? So one billionaire is what seems unobtainable now, but I follow people and I know people that are friends with guys that are billionaires. I don't personally know a billionaire, but I know some people that are very close with some billionaires so like once removed but obtainable you've seen them do it and they've been doing business much shorter than i have things you know the internet helps things for sure um but just being guided like if you want to be a billionaire you got to be around some dudes that are millionaires heading there very quickly how did you do it what did you do you guys all have andy Frisella. if you listen to the mf ceo podcast which stopped happening 360 some episodes. It's now called Andy Frisella Real AF. There's still a little bit of that in there, but he talks all about current events and things a little bit more. But you're listening to a guy who is very well on the way to becoming a billionaire. We didn't have any of that stuff. Like growing up, there was Tony Robbins and the guys before him. Um, whoever your dude that you look at, Ed Milet now, uh, Vanderchuk, um, Vander Media. Um, uh, any of those dudes, right? You watch, you used to have to buy the tapes or you had to go to the library and check out the tapes and drive around in your car and play them, right? It's, it's just who you're putting content into your head. When are you going to become a 1000 And then the other one was be the results guy. It doesn't matter. And, and I have, I just, things come to mind, right? As a, as a kid, you look up to people who are, you know, more in shape, I would say, right? You look up to people who are more in shape. Those are the actors and the heroes in the movie. And you watch these movies and you walk out of the movie and you're like, I'm going to be Rocky Balboa or I'm going to be the karate kid. And you go home and you do some push-ups and you try to do some karate shit for a couple days, maybe. And then it's out of your head. It's gone because it's difficult. It takes time. It takes effort the results guy. And then you have people that you misperceive, you you misjudge. They're bigger dudes. They don't look to be in fucking super shape, but they're doing things in life every day and they are very, very successful. But you misjudge them when you first meet them. And when you get to know them, you realize they've done a lot of shit in their life and the first thing you went off of was appearance. But they have results. They have evidence. They have fucking great families. They have fucking a lot of shit going for them. And you were fast to judge them. But you never did know them. And it's the same thing 
with dudes that you have some appearance that they're in great shape and they, they've got this like I think people have this idea people ask me and I don't know if it's serious or if they're messing with me when they ask it but they're like hey John if I was only going to do you know one exercise what would it be to bulk up or if I was going to eat one protein group what would it be people have a perception that people they see on the internet are a certain way I don't work out hard like I used to. I work out very, very light weights. I have injuries, and I just hit 50 years old. I remember when I hit 30 years old, everybody said, man, when you hit 30 years old, you're going to feel that. You're going to have injuries. Your bones are going to creak. And sure as shit, I hit 30 years old. I used to jump out of this truck over here with 37. I don't even know where my truck is right now. I need to drive that thing. I have so many vehicles that they get more damage from sitting still than driving them. So I got this truck with 37 inch tires on it and I used to hop right out of that thing. Turn 30, I don't hop out of it anymore. I started feeling that every time I just, you know, hit wrong. I bought some steps. I used to just run, jump, I'd b jump out of the truck, skip over to the loading dock on my other building and just hop up there. And at 30, I ended up with some steps. Now I step onto the step on the truck, step down on the ground, Still skip over to the loading dock, but I run up the three steps. You just feel shit. I turn 50. I wake up hurting in the morning. I'm just sore. I toss and turn all night long. And I can't, like, I'll be sleeping. I sleep on my stomach this way. And then my hand will go numb. So I'll turn over on this shoulder. And I'll be good for probably 30, 40 minutes. And then this hand will be numb. Or my shoulder will hurt. Or there's always something. Like, I've never been able to just sleep on my back. I get in a sleeping bag, I can for a while, but I want to lay on my stomach when I sleep. So, I don't know where I was going. Oh, 50. So, you know, when I turn 50, I fucking ache more. And it's, it's, it's got to be a mental thing, right? The universe or God didn't say, okay, you're 50 now. You need to slow down, so I'm going to make you hurt. People have this perception of things that are not always how they are. When you get a chance to be around somebody or you get a chance to have access. Access is a big one, right? You can have access to people, but it, you have to fucking evolve to continue to have access, right? You have to have evidence of success when you get around people that you perceive to be successful. If they give any shit about you, you have to have, you have, to have evidence of success. You have to be the results guy. And not for them in your own life. Otherwise, you're nothing more than just an employee. And those people that you perceive to be successful, they're successful for a reason. I've been, uh, there's people that I've looked up to immensely. And when I finally get to meet them, I'm just like a, a dipshit, right? I get, I get up next to them. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask them. Why do I have the perception that they are where they are? What is it? That they've been on Joe Rogan? Does that make them successful? I think in society, for me, when I'm telling somebody about Joel Salatin, I'm like, he's been on Joe Rogan like seven times. I think that lends credibility to their success, right? It's just one more thing on their resume. They've been on Joe Rogan. I think that's a huge thing to be on Joe Rogan um, or, or anybody like that, right? Or they've, they've been on television or they've been on the news, right? Those are, those are things that you would think if those venues are putting them on, They've, you know, lends them credit. They've checked them out. Their story is real, right? There's some, they didn't fake their way there. So, I don't know what I have to say, man. I'm just going to keep walking around this building here until I have a mile, I guess, before I go in here and do this. I don't want to go do cardio this morning. I woke up this morning at 2.30, wide awake. Went to bed at about 12.30. Um, woke up at 2.30, woke up at 3.30. Woke up at 4, should have got up at 4, and then woke up at 420, 420-ish something. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't have anything else to add to this. I hope that you guys do something of value through the day. I hope you do something with urgency. If you can't do what you do, the task you have to do, if you can't do it with urgency, if you don't do it with urgency, it's not going to be important to you, right? How you view what you do affects how you do what you do. If you do it, there's the other, that's the third boy cat right there. Nope, that's, that's, that one doesn't have a collar on. That's one of the two. That's frickin' frack. <clears throat> Boots and giggles, shits and giggles. Um, 
if, if you do things slowly or you mope around like you're half awake during the day, those people you look up to, if that's you, you're building habits and that's going to take away from your best days. If on your normal days, you don't act like you're 100%, when it comes time to be 100%, you won't be. And if you don't act like everything you're doing is urgent and important, then it won't be because you don't view it as such. And then when it comes time to do the things that are urgent and important, you haven't built memory of that. You don't have a track record of that. It's just like you want to be a bodybuilder. You're not going to be a bodybuilder unless you lift a lot of weights and you eat a certain way. Everybody wants to just do chemicals and boom, I'm a bodybuilder. That's not how that shit works. You take all the chemicals in the world. You don't put the hard work in there. You're never going to even touch the stage. Although they do seem to let people on stage who have no business being on stage. Maybe that's good for them. Maybe that gives them a taste of it. Gets it out of their system, weeds it out. And then they tell people how hard it is. So the ones that do it feel more important or are in fact more important from it. Here I am again, going down another avenue. Full moon out there. It seems very pretty behind those trees. I'm going to go in here and take all these clothes off. It's cold out here. My hands are getting cold. I turned the phone on. I didn't have nothing to say. I don't know really what I said. I hope somebody gets some value. Do something like it's fucking important today. Otherwise, get the fuck out of the way of the people doing it.